everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Morganwork Satellite Precision M3. It's the end of 2015 now, and I'm finally getting this watch in my hands. And I first saw this watch as a prototype back in 2012. So it's been more than three years since I've had an opportunity to first see the prototype of this, and now I'm having a final version in my hand. It feels good because I was really into these watches. So what exactly are you looking at here? You see, a, you know, you see an analog dial, you see digital elements, you see a bunch of pushers on the case. Um, you probably see things here that you don't normally see um, on a lot of timepieces. You can start to see with this section here and this section here, they almost look like screens. They're not actually screens. These are antennas um, because this is also a GPS watch. Um, and it has a series of, uh, of sensors in it, like a compass and barometer and altimeter and thermometer. So it would be called a triple sensor watch with GPS. So essentially, this is a very nicely designed, um, not this particular version. I believe it was the M1 received the, uh, the Red Dot Good Design Award. This is a very slick um, sort of German design, trying to be sexy uh, Casio Pro Trek, right? So it's very much sort of an outdoors adventure watch, but tries to have a little bit of a sex appeal to it. And, and, and I really like the design. Um, you know, the traditional hands, you have luminant on them, lume on the bezel, lume on the inside. Um, you can definitely uh, use this as, as a traditional watch. You can turn off uh, the screen um, so you don't see those elements as well. Here's a fun thing. If you want to see the screens more, you can push the pusher here at 3 o'clock, and the hands move. So you have a sort of an unadulterated view of the screen. And on, on the screen here, you see you have the time. Um, and down here, you have the date, you have the UTC information. I can move it there to the day of the week. And you know, there's features that, that watches like the pa Casio Pro Trek, which cost less, are going to do better. And there's things that, that uh, the Morgan Work M3 are going to do better. So I wouldn't say this is like the Casio Pro Trek killer. This isn't the Tissot T-Touch killer. All these watches have. Um, various pluses and minuses. This is just sort of its own distinct flavor. And it's got some really cool stuff. The case is uh, larger. It's about 48 millimeters wide, definitely on the thicker side. Um, it's in titanium, though. This is a black color titanium. So it's got a nice heft to it, but it's not as, as heavy as it could be. And of course, you have a sapphire crystal um, over the dial there, as well as these elements here. So durability is something that they're very focused on. Um, and I believe there's about uh, 100 meters of water resistance. On the back of the watch here, you can see um, a little scale of various time zones here because you adjust the, the time zones via UTC. So here's reference cities. This is also a limited edition of just 300 pieces, actually. So they're not making too many of these. So this is going to be a rare watch. But I have a feeling that uh, Morgan Work is going to follow up with, with later models. But this is, this, is the, this is the initial one. So I like it a lot. And right here is the charging port. So this watch has a pretty long battery life. I'm not sure exactly where the battery life is right now. Um, of course, that's going to depend on usage, but I'll go ahead and include that in the review. But it's not the type of thing that you're going to have to, to charge every day by any means. But it comes here with this um, charging port. Now, originally, when I saw the M3 a couple years ago, uh, Morgan Work had designed a dock uh, bigger than this, but what was interesting about it, it had a solar panel so that if you were away from power, you could go ahead and charge it that way. I think that's something that they're still developing. Um, they've really tried hard to get this stuff out, so this is sort of a first attempt. One of the things I like about this charging port is it's pretty secure on the watch, right? So it kind of goes with the watch, you can see there. So you have to worry about falling off all the time, um, which is something that I, that I think was particularly well done. Not a very long cable here, but I assume that you're going to want to go ahead and put that in a computer. But you can put in, you know, any any micro USB you want. I mean, this is just something that that many phones that are not Apple pho Apple phones have today. Okay, so that's that's the charging element. I'm actually curious because I did charge it a couple days ago, and I'm going to let it completely die and see how long that takes. So let's look at the overall functions here. This is sort of your home screen. Uh, has an alarm. Uh, chronograph, which the instructions refer to as chronometer, which I find quite funny. But there's actually kind of an interesting reason about, about why that is, and, and I'll get to that. Um, there's a very odd limitation here in the chronograph, and I could be wrong, but it appears to only measure up to one hour. So you have um, basically a hundredth of a second there, or t t decimal point and a hundredth of a second, uh, seconds, and then minutes just up to 59. And that's kind of an arbitrary limitation based upon the, the fact that there aren't, there's enough space here. But what they could have done is had somewhere down here, for example, a counter for the hours, right? So this could have been minutes, 
seconds, uh, partial seconds, and then there could have been an hour counter down there. So I think that that's a big limitation because I oftentimes like to measure things that are, are longer um, than, than an hour, and that's something which is important to me. So that seems to be a little bit arbitrary um, on the chronograph. Um, there's a countdown timer though, so this is kind of a consolation, right? So if you want to count down something, you have obviously more than an hour. So I think you have maybe 99 hours or something like that um, in, in terms of the, uh, uh, of, the, of the countdown timer. So I guess if you really need to measure a time, you could do it as a countdown timer versus a chronograph, which helps you. And one of the things I like about this is you see here how I've, I've moved the hands out of the way. Casio, for example, has kind of a knowing habit of of reverting everything to a default state. You don't have to do anything, it just reverts back. This one will wait until I push the button to go back. And it's the same thing on these screens, right? So if I have it on countdown, countdown timer here and I, and I don't do anything to the watch, it's not just gonna go back to the home screen after a minute or two, it's gonna stay here. And that's a, that's a des design decision that I appreciate because when, when I'm operating a watch and I wanna keep it on that, that feature, it's kind of annoying, especially with Casio, um, that just goes back to the home screen sometimes. I'm like, no, I wanted to keep looking at the chronograph. Um, and again, it depends on the model, but that's something that annoys me a little bit. Um, it's a large watch, but it's very wearable. It's 48 millimeters wide. And again, you have to remember, it has a, a, a GPS receiver on there. And again, that's something which is you know, not, not, not the tiniest thing in the world. Um, and they want to make sure they have antennas. And again, they needed to have these spaces here because b the case is titanium. Um, it wouldn't allow uh, for that to happen if, if there wasn't a dedicated sort of antenna place. Um, let's keep moving on here. Let's go back. Chronograph timer. Uh, compass, very much like a Tissot T-touch there where the hands realign themselves uh, to become the compass needle. And uh, you see the degrees right there. Um, there's another feature here which allows you to use the compass function to, I believe, so, oh, I just actually moved it to the barometer. So this is the barometer function temperature there. Um, and I can go ahead and change that to, there we go. That's the altitude in meters, 27 meters. You can change that from, to, from feet, you know, feet uh, to, to metric, of course, so imperial to metric. Um, the uh, additional information there. Uh, record is you can store up to 10 uh, sort of records of altitude and things like this. So if you're traveling and you want to keep a record of the maximum distance, you can, you can do that. Um, you can turn the sound on and off um, and then back to the home screen. To, get, to do the satellite reception, I'll show you here. You push these two buttons here. Let's see here. There we go. So it's counting down from one minute. I'm inside right now, so it not, might not work. And there'll be three little dots right there that show up that, that signify that there was a successful syncing with the satellites. Now, in terms of accuracy, you can't actually set the time on this watch, at least not in a way that I've seen. It has to actually sync with the satellites. And the reason for that is this watch is so precise. It's, it's, I think they claim under one second of accuracy per year. And that's without syncing to uh, the satellite. So in addition to syncing to the satellite to get the updated time where you are, it also has a thermocompensated quartz inside of it. So this is a high precision quartz movement. And on top of that, it also um, gets signals from GPS, um, you know, well, global positioning satellites. It's so hard with GPS because you want to see GPS satellites, but that's clearly redundant. Um, so we need to think of a good term, GPS flying things. <laughs> um, so it counted down right here and I don't know if you can tell, but right there's three little dots that said that it did um, successfully sync up with the satellite to get the correct time. So there's a couple of drawbacks you can see here, but there's also a lot of cool features as well. Um, I really think that Morgan Work wanted to get something out and, and felt that it was full featured enough, but in the future they'll probably be, um, you know, like that solar charging uh, dock, um, possibly redesigned uh, dial so that you can have, you know, a, a longer chronograph and things like that. But overall, this is a cool watch, and when you, 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 you have the ability of having a much more attractive version that has personality, that has soul, of a, I guess you could say, you know, a, 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 a nerdy adventure watch, because it has all these cool sensors and features like that, which aren't traditionally associated with, like, a great, you know, watch to wear with the suits.
clearly a little bit on the larger side to wear with a suit, but it's definitely a lot more clean and conservative and minimalistic than I think a lot of people would have guessed. Um, and the legibility is very good. There's, in addition to the, this M3 version, there's also versions such as the M1 and the M2 um, that actually don't have any digital screen. They're fully analog um, that might be interesting uh, to you as well. Again, limited edition of 300 pieces for this version of the Morganworks Satellite Precision M3. Um, don't have a final price at this pr exact time. It's about $2,000, and I will update you on that of course in the written review, which will be on a blog to watch soon. Thanks.